So day three, we've been doing this five day live video series about how to deal with the back to school wave that's upon us. So let's um, go ahead and get started. Oh, for those of you who see this tiny.cc not back to school, make sure you're signed up because I sent out some really fabulous, I think, fabulous handouts for each of the videos, but especially today because today is 30 inspiring tips for what I've collected over, what, 22 years of listening to people of what do they do uh, when the kids all leave on the bus to go to school that first week. What do you do? What's something fun? And I have 30 different ideas for you to choose from. So if you don't get to some this year, you can get to them next year, or you can just do them all, you know, one week after another. There's so many different ways that you can make this a really awesome celebration, you know, about making this choice. So I want you to sign up here to make sure you get the, um, the handouts and my little video remind or my email reminders. Um, I'll probably, because this is such a cool thing, I'll probably, I'm pointing to my handout like you can see it. Um, I will probably put um, a little link in the comments after we're done so that people could just go ahead and get this if that's what they wanted. Um, so we're going to get started. So celebrating your life together. That's really what we're doing. Celebrating your life together. That's what this is about. It's not that you're missing out. It's not that uh, the kids hopping on the bus are getting something that your guys aren't getting. Your guys are getting something way better. So sometimes because we've all been kind of indoctrinated into this schoolish way of thinking, we we kind of buy into it, something deep inside us. And that's the stuff that we have to undo. And sometimes the way to undo that is to deliberately put other things in their place. So we take something away and we have a void. And then what happens is habits and concerns and those kind of creep into that void. So instead put something deliberately in to fill the void, to make you happy, to get you inspired and excited about this choice that you're making for your kids with your kids on a day-to-day -day basis so it's a celebration because day one we did what does your child want more of in their day right we talked about what could what can you do to help them um, cope with this because the neighbor kids are all amped up and talking about it or the cousins or even just Daniel Tiger they're all talking about it, and it helps to make sure that he knows, okay, they're doing that, but I'm doing this, and it's something he really likes. And then day two, we talked about what do you need to undo. Remember, we had a handout for with a bunch of journaling questions, and hopefully you guys got a chance to do that. Um, or you've got time, you know. You can just sit down and think about it and... You know, I think that sometimes that's another important piece to unschooling is that we can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff and shuffling people from place to place or getting the laundry done or getting the food or, oh, my gosh, we're out of milk or, oh, my gosh, we're out of this and we got to go do something else, that we don't take the time to do that kind of internal work. And the internal work on the good days is what's going to see you through when you have kind of a bump in the road because we're all going to have bumps in the road. So I think that just do, do a little bit of focusing on what's going on inside you. So that's what day two is about. Hopefully you got the handouts. If you didn't, um, go ahead. Let me think, how can you get them? If you, if you sign up for the, at that email, it'll just do tomorrow and the next day. So I guess, I guess you could email me at coaching at suepatterson.com and tell me, do I need day one, day two, or day three? And I'll just get them over to you. All right. Enough of that. Because now we're creating new family traditions. I've got no idea what these white things are over here. I think it is some big farming thing. But I just loved that picture. You know, we're just starting something new. So the first thing, you know how we got, we're inundated with all these Facebook pictures of people and their kids and their 
taking pictures and I'm in first grade, I'm in kindergarten and all that. You can do that too, but just change it up. I'm five, I'm nine, I I love dogs. <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm into Minecraft. <laughs> but maybe you could just do I'm five years old and hold it up. And um, that way you can not feel left out. You know, if you want to get in there and show your kids, remember, <laughs> most of the time those people only hear about their own kids' pictures anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. But if it's something you want to do, it's an easy fix. A simple piece of paper on the computer, print it out landscape style sideways that says I'm whatever age and, um, and they can hold it. And that's something they like to do, you know, sometimes. Or maybe you could do something more fun, you know, taking pictures of them um, when you're at, the, at those back to school sales. Or maybe just fun pictures, things that they like to do. Take a bunch of pictures. And then these will be their, their shots for what was going on with them um, in, the, in the fall of 2018. Because I think that, you know, for me, my kids, they love looking back at themselves. <laughs> and um, so go ahead. And now, gosh, with digital photographs, it's so easy to just snap a little of this and a little of that. You know, for when my kids were little, we were taking them to the Fox Photo Development Place and only to discover that everyone's eyes were closed. So you have huge advantages. Take, it, take advantage of it. Um, let's see, what else do I have for this? Or you could show their growth, you know, whether, whether you have marked something on a wall or marked something on a piece of wood or whatever to show their growth. And then you do it every year in August. That's kind of cool. You could have it like side by side. You know, some people do that where they have like, as they get older, I was trying to find one of those pictures that had like the, the, the kid and the mom and then one year, next year, next year, next year. And that would be fun to do too, you know. Um, so Allison says we make a chat book each year of everything they've done, kind of like a yearbook. That's so awesome. Um, so I think that, you know, they just love, don't they just love to see themselves? That, that's been my experience. Even now that they're in their 20s, they're like, oh, is that me? I'm like, yes, that's you. And then they kind of like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, so remember, you're just making your own traditions. Another cool thing to do is go to the movies in the middle of the day because you will have your choice of seats. <laughs> um, nobody will be there, and that's really kind of cool. Um, whether you go in the morning because why not? or you go in the middle of the afternoon because it's kind of nice to be off doing something when the school buses dump the kids in the front, you know, that's sometimes for some kids that can feel a little bit like um, they're missing out. And so get them out of there. They don't have to watch that. They can go to the movies instead. You know, everybody's got dollar movies in their neighborhood or somewhere not too far. You could go to the movie. It could be like your thing. Or you could go to multiple. <laughs> that could be exhausting. But you could go to multiple movies. Just something to make it fun and different and exciting so that they feel happy about this time of year, too. Another thing, lots of times we hear that people are, um, that kids are bummed that they're not riding the bus, that they're not getting on the bus. So get them on a bus. You know, it's not that hard to to find one and take it take a bus downtown take a bus to somewhere else you know look online and see where it's going where it, or or just ride it until you see something that looks like a good place to get off and um, you know it's always you know from a life skill standpoint it's really kind of good to be able to um, hop on a bus to hop on and hop off and for them to know that how to do that in addition to just letting them ride a bus on, because everybody's talking about getting on the school bus. So city buses are available. So maybe what you need to do is have a, a school night slumber party. Maybe even the night before um, the night before the first day of school, which in some places it's already happened. So we missed that boat. But still, I cannot tell you the number of times somebody said, you're having a sleepover on a Wednesday? Like, 
Yeah, and a Tuesday or a Thursday. We can do it whenever we want. So that's something that is um, something you can do. And something that if your kids really enjoy it, then that's a super fun way for them to create a little bit of community and feel a little, I don't, I don't not want to say rebellious, but it feels a little like me too. we got fun stuff going on too. And it's really fun. You know, it's not one of those things that the grown-ups say, oh, it's going to be fun, and then it's not fun. This is real fun. So, I mean, for some kids, some kids don't want to do it, but the kids that do, let's help them get there. So lots of communities have a not back to school party. Lots of times because of this, you, you know, in the northern hemisphere, it's hot. And, um, and so it's often at a swimming pool. And, but there's different things they do. They do potlucks. They do um, big get-togethers at parks. Um, Laura says the joy is we get to do as we wish when we wish. Exactly. So find out if your local group is offering any kind of back-to-school event that you can participate in. And um, it's a it's a cool way to get to know the other kids there. You know, my kids would often go to those and come home with a new best friend. And that was kind of, it was fun. So check out, usually there's a Facebook group. Sometimes there's still email lists. Um, sometimes there's websites. Ask around. Over on the unschoolingmomtomom.com uh, website, we have a whole list of Facebook groups for um, different communities. So if if yours if you if you want to look under that, look at that, that's um, I'll try to get the link in here. But that's the way to find those people. If you haven't already. You can probably just put your city and the word homeschooler or unschooler in the search box on Facebook and it'll give you what the um, what the groups are that are nearby or that are available to you. So you might just want to host your own party. Maybe you're not going to, maybe maybe the big one has already happened and you're just going to host something else of your own. But I mean, you just, you have your friends. Your kids have friends and they have them all over and they have a little party. And um, so there's just different ways that we've seen people have parties or they've gotten together, Chuck E. Cheese, or they have <laughs> done different things where you can um, hang out together with your friends. So that's fun. Or maybe you're just going to hang out with one friend. That's my son <laughs> on the right. When we were, he was about 12 and we had an exchange student with us. So hanging out with a friend is always a fun thing to do. Or go to the water parks. You know, the water parks are probably still open during the day um, on the weekdays for a couple more weeks. I, I live um, near Austin and they're still open because the college kids aren't all um, on their schedules yet and so um, take advantage of no lines take advantage of um, the fact that they're still available and then of course there's theme parks and again with the lines that you don't have to deal with so many people that are coming and you know theme parks all over the place of um, what's close by and that's a super fun thing to do. I saw a, a little homeschooling meme go by the other day that said first day of school guess it's time for me to pull out our family passes and get over to wherever is close by for you. You know because that's fun for the kids when they're when somebody says to them hey we're gonna start such and such and it's gonna be cool what are y'all doing? Oh just roller coaster hopping. We're going from place to place all week long. We're hitting all the roller coasters or whatever is something that's like, whoa, really? And so the theme parks are available and often things that people end up doing. Maybe you want something a little more peaceful and you want to go back to nature or you want to do a trail, a, you know, hike a trail or play in a creek or go on a boat ride or go fishing. There's a lot of opportunities. But when you talk to the kids, what kinds of other things can we do to make this kind of a celebration week? So the, the deal for us in the Northern Hemisphere is to prolong your summer as long as you can, you know? Because just because school starts doesn't mean summer ends. School started here on Monday and it was 101. I'd say summer's still happening. So, um, you know, 
do summer until the weather says you can't or um, or until the park gates close um, you know for water parks but you can actually you know this is kind of a interesting thing to me that often we hear people say um, that unschoolers aren't living in the real world in fact they are <laughs> They're living in the world that really exists. It is still summer. It is still whatever season you're in. It didn't end just because the school doors opened. That's a totally artificial thing. So living your life based on what, what your surroundings are, that is reality. So just my little soapbox there. Um, maybe you want to take a family bike ride. I would say avoid the times like from 8 to 10 in the morning <laughs> you got the kids that are getting there on time and then you got the frantic moms that are trying to get them there before the end of first period <laughs> so but later in the day or or in the afternoon that's a fun thing to go do you know it's one of those things that we sometimes don't prioritize that a lot of the time what the kids really want is time with us and so when you especially when they're little but also when they're older, even when they kind of push a little bit at us, um, you you know, you want to try to be able to stay as available to them as possible. And a little bike ride is not a bad idea. Maybe you're going to take a family vacation. Maybe you will, um, you know, it's a little, well, it's not that late to plan one. You could plan one for um, the first week of September. You can plan one for any time you want. That's the cool advantage. That you do it when you want, whenever you want, and um, and so if if this back to school time is kind of hard for your guys, um, know that next year this would be a really great time to plan a vacation, you know, so that you're gone for the week, and then you come back and everybody's kind of bored with it all by then. Or maybe you're gonna maybe you're gonna spend a lot of time looking at different things for going in September because remember the prices drop after September after Labor Day and so that's always you know whether it's a hotel or a beach house or or even airline tickets there you know in between this September and November time this is kind of the good time for for pricing or maybe you want to go camping maybe you want to go a little cheaper and you can take them off to some campsites that are nearby and or maybe you make a road trip of it and you go camping somewhere really cool because you could just do this in your own backyard. You know, you could just pop up a tent and do a bunch of crafts and do a bunch, you know, cook some marshmallows, you know, put some fire in the grill, <laughs> you know, put use it for wood, however you want to do it, that you could make a little campfire and you could do all the camping stuff right there in the backyard. You kind of go rustic for a couple of days. That would be fun. They would think that's fun. <laughs> you might be like, excuse me, I've got to go inside and have a shower. But, um, but you, you're, you know, you're kind of living outside in the backyard. That'd be fun. So over on Pinterest, I've got a whole, well, we have a whole bunch of boards on Pinterest over here at um, You Mom to Mom because I didn't have the thing. And um, there's a lot of different boards, but this one is Nature Fun and Camping. Lots of fun activities that you could do with them. Um, there's also one that's... Um, outdoor outdoor fun I think it's called and so it has lots of um, <coughs> games and stuff that you can set up and ways to play in the backyard so that's cool I just want to make sure you know about that maybe you want to have a movie marathon maybe you're gonna get up in the morning and start I don't know start a Star Wars or an Indiana Jones you know one right after another and or maybe it's comedies or Maybe it's just favorites and you could end up having a tradition. Um, I, I should have gotten the picture because the one I always recommend is Accepted. And while it's, while it's all about going to school, it's also about um, not prioritizing the academics. You know, realizing that following interests is a valuable thing to do. And, um, and in the end, that's totally celebrated. So if you have a kid that is kind of like, is this real? Is this, are we really doing the right thing? You know, a kid that really needs more de-schooling. Um, usually that happens in like the 10 and up crowd. They might benefit from watching the movie Accepted. 
So a movie marathon at home is always fun. And sleeping in is always good. So lots of times you'll see unschoolers taking pictures of their kids and, um, and they're sleeping. Like the school bus rolled down the street and here's my guys and they're snoozing. So go buy some new pillows. Go get something really wonderful, you know. And then when you come down to have your movie marathon, everybody can bring their pillow and it can just be so cozy. Um, so that's something. <laughs> or maybe breakfast in bed on the first day. I remember one year we did this. We had breakfast in bed and we and we watched, it was in my bed because it faced the front of the house and we could see that school bus drive by. The kids just waved from the window. Of course, the kids couldn't see them inside. But there we were eating our breakfast, reading our stories, having, you know, music was playing. We were having a great time. And um, a little breakfast in bed is sometimes a fun way to celebrate the day. We're starting the morning slowly. Just everybody bring their favorite book in and we just kind of cuddle and, and, um, and read our books and then start our day at whatever pace we want to start. So we don't always have to hit the ground running. Sometimes we can hang out for a little bit before we get up. So that's another option. Maybe we're going to go out for breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever the choice is. Um, be prepared, though. The waitress will probably say, oh, no school today. So you can think of your tomorrow. We're going to talk a lot about um, responses that you can have to people. But um, if you go out to eat, you might want to say, oh, yeah, this is our school. And they'll kind of be like, mm. and then you can say, we own school. And I think oftentimes it's easier just to stay homeschool than in school because they're like, what? And they don't really want to know. They just don't get what you're saying. So, um, you know, it's like out of their box. So having some pat answers is are really kind of a good thing to do. If um, maybe you'll just say you homeschool. Maybe you'll say, um, we haven't started yet. Oh, where do you go? <laughs> this really special school, there's only four people in there. <laughs> um, but tomorrow we can talk about some ideas. Or you guys can put them on here if you if you guys have some little things that you've said to people that kind of help move them along. Because sometimes your kids don't want, want the focus. Sometimes they um, would prefer that it not be all about that. Sometimes the kids are like kind of excited to be strong about it. So you just kind of gauge it by what's going on with them and support whichever way they want to be. So another thing you can do is list list fun things to do at home. Brainstorm together on what kinds of things could you do during this week, during this upcoming few months. You know, I always like to think of it by the season because there's, there's festivals and there's things, which I think is the next one. Um, things that are going to come to our community. So that's kind of your job as the, the official tour guide of the family to look around and see what's available out there that they might like to do and then let them know about it. But back with this one about things at home, there are things that they can do in the house that they may have forgotten about. That even if you kind of went through the room with a clipboard and said, Oh, remember this? Here's this stuff that's stuck over in the closet. Let's pull it out. We might want to do it. And maybe we need a couple more um, um, folding tables <coughs> just so we have somewhere to set things up or to do things and make it really convenient for them to enjoy and explore and discover some of the things they already have. Okay. So maybe you need to get some new new board games. Maybe you need um, new cards, new dice, new whatever. Something to make it kind of fun that um, maybe one of the things that you decide on your family brainstorming is that you're going to have a game night. And maybe you'll invite other people over for your game night or a game day. Maybe you'll do a game day for the first day of school when the kids all go to school in the neighborhood. Everybody that are your friends come over and bring a game. So that's fun. So you want to get get in on the good deals. 
don't don't always avoid I mean if it really bugs you going into the store where they're having all of the back to school sales then avoid it but there are some good deals you know there's some inexpensive spirals <laughs> And what you may discover is that your kid really just kind of wanted new crayons or new lunch boxes or new notebooks or a new hoodie or new tennis shoes or something. And now's really the good time to go in there and get it. Oh, I missed it. Somewhere I had, I guess I didn't make it. I had a slide with Kohl's and shopping, but, um, but you get the gist. So another possibility, if you're having one of those days where you're thinking, oh, man, I should have bought that sing, spell, read, and write program. <laughs> Instead, go buy a family pass to one of the local um, zoos, parks, aquariums, or museums. Get a family pass so that you can say, hey, we have a couple hours. Let's swing on over there. You know, when you don't have a family pass, you tend to, like, <laughs> You're that family that stays to the very end and the kid is crying and you're like, no, we've got to get our money's worth. There's going to be fireworks at 10 o'clock. We're staying to the end. <laughs> Don't be that person. Um, if you want to see the fireworks, come in later at 7. You know, but if you have a family pass, it's a lot easier to do because you, um, you feel like you can come and go because you come and go whenever it fits your family. So... Use that curriculum money for family passes, is my point. So another thing that I saw that some people did was they just kind of made it special. And I think of it kind of like a um, <clears throat> like a Easter basket, you know, full of stuff. But it can also be full of just fun things. And that would be a fun thing to come downstairs and see um, at the table there's a box full of stuff that they would be really interested in that are fun and um, exciting and it can be from the dollar store it doesn't have to be something that's <coughs> I'm sorry it doesn't have to be something super expensive so but these just give you some ideas of um, ways to make it special but the bottom line is you're going to build this sweet nest you know you're going to use your five senses think about what are they seeing and smelling and hearing and tasting and feeling? And how can I make this really this fabulous place that they can come home to or, or launch from or retreat back to? Or how, you know, how can I make this a really wonderful place for them? And that way, um, you know, that's how learning happens when when the anxiety is down and everybody feels supported and loved and um, then they're able to step into the unknown that learning sometimes brings. You're curious about something and you want to explore it. If you're afraid in your surroundings or if your surroundings are not that conducive, then you tend to hold back. Whereas if it's like, if it's a different setup, if it's if it is this rich, loving, supportive environment, then they can explore to their heart's content. So I think that is, yeah, that's the last of it. So if you guys have anything else that you do that you would like to add into the comments of things that are going on, I know, I don't know whether it correlates. You know, sometimes after you've unschooled for a while, you are not even noticing when school starts. So know that in your future, that's probably going to come, that you're going to have, you, know, you might be a little more focused on it in the beginning when you first start to, to do this, but as time rolls on, so does life. And the kids have run into enough other people that they know that's not always quite like the Lizzie McGuire movie, you know, <laughs> from locker to locker, where they hang out all day long. It's not really like that. And so they run into enough people that have informed them. And and they're just busy living their lives. You know, sometimes you can live your life as if school doesn't even exist. So that is what I wish for you in your future. But in the meantime, you can, um, you can try some of these new traditions to fill in and, and do instead of 
sending the kids off to school and getting swept up with all that back to school marketing that happens. And if you need a little more support, here's a couple of links for you of ways that I can that I can help you. We've got a we've got a call in about in about 30 minutes. Our group coaching call starts over on Zoom. And if that's something you're like, oh my gosh, I really need some support. I feel so isolated in my community. I'd love a little collection. It's about 30 people. So it's nice. You're always welcome to join us over there. So I guess that's it for today. I'll answer you on the in the comment section if um, if you have a question. But 30 minutes, that's pretty good. And technically we did it. I'm so excited. All right, you guys have a great Wednesday. And I will, um, I'll see you online. All right, bye.